Hi everybody. Hi there. Well, isn't it beautiful behind us? And this is where we're at, our current location. I'm not gonna say yet when you get caught up, but uh, this is an intro to another video. Yep, this is just a teaser, so you know you have something to look forward to. <laughs> so this video is covering uh, the second part of our journey south after the sugar beet harvest. And it covers the states of Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. And we did encounter some more problems along the way. You're going to see that. <laughs> but it stuff, does happen, doesn't it? Stuff happens, yes. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, if you haven't checked out our other videos, please take a look at them. There's lots to see, how-tos, and uh, camp kind reviews, and our travels as well. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. So this area of Nebraska that we're in happens to be called the crossroads of the sand hills. So these roly-poly hills that we're seeing here are actually sand hills and they're vegetation covered. And we do know this to be true because the campground that we just stayed at was sand. It was not dirt. It was just sand all over the place. So um, yeah, pretty interesting little phenomena about this section of Nebraska. After a very long seven plus hour drive, we pulled into our next campground in Lake in Kansas right at dusk and left again the next morning. Watching the weather, we were trying to make it to New Mexico before a cold front with freezing temperatures came through. So far, right on schedule. Hey y'all, well, adventures on the road. <clears throat> okay, we, we left our spot this morning, heading south, and we have one bad tire. I've been keeping an eye on it. We stopped to get gas, got a great price on gas, things were going good. Um, but I happened to notice, I've been watching this tire, look at that. Well, why would I let it get so far? Well, we were gonna buy we had bought four new tires when we were in Fargo, but uh, it turns out they could sell us the tires at Walmart, but they couldn't put them on. And it, it's really not Walmart's fault. The guy that is knowledgeable and knew how to do it wasn't in because his wife was in the hospital. So we just got our money back and hit the road. But here we are. So I've got the spare on, pumped up, we had an air compressor, we got a four-way, and we have a hydraulic jack. You want to have the same things too, otherwise we could have had a very bad day. So we're blessed, really. We were pulled over, I spotted it, we had a place to instantly park and get it changed, and Sandy's bought lunch to boot. <laughs> so we're counting our blessings, and we're going on our way, forging ahead. How's that? <laughs> Okay, so part two of our little tire adventure here with Sandy found the Walmart that was about a half hour out of our way, but not bad. And we got a new tire, got that on. Our spare is a 10 year old tire, although it has brand new tread. We certainly don't want to travel with a 10 year old tire. Not even though we want to keep it as a spare, but it's on, it's balanced, everything's good here. We just got the spare mounted up put the cover back on and it was a 30 pound side and I pumped it up to 65 of course for a reason. I'm gonna let some air back out so we're not carrying that extra weight. And if you believe that one <laughs> I want you to watch our channel. His wife didn't even believe that one. <laughs> that, that was a little far fetched. Right, we're gonna wrap things up and we're gonna cut today short. We had originally picked out a campground still about two hours away, but decided to cut this day short. 
We spent the night at Sanford Yake Campground on Lake Meredith in Texas. This was a beautiful area and we would have liked to explore a little more, but we were still being chased by freezing temperatures. So we only spent one night and got back on the road in the morning. Our next stop was at Rocky Point Campground in Santa Rosa Lake State Park in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Another very beautiful area, but again, we only spent one night and continued on our journey. Just north of hey Seguro, New Mexico, we, are, we stopped at a rest uh, area working our and way found to court this. Site, and we are also working on, as Sandy said, problem number three, which is uh, a hub that's overheating, melted off the plastic dust cover. Yeah, it's supposed to look like this one over here. And uh, so we've splashed water on it. We've got it cooled down. Uh, fortunately, Sandy found a place Thanks to Google Maps, it comes highly rated. I called and talked to the fellow, explained the problem. So it's about 17 miles away and we got a limpet there. And also Sandy looked up, our, you know, it's either the bearing or the brakes. And uh, the thing that she looked up said 90% of the overheating is caused by the brakes, which is a good thing. And all the other ones are fine. And we had new bearings put, installed and packed uh, two and a half years ago when we bought the trailer. So I don't know. We won't know until we get there, but this fellow says he'll help us out just as soon as we get there. We've got to limp down the road. Fortunately, it looks pretty flat from here, so we can just uh, go easy on the brakes and uh, take our, you know, go to reasonable speed and see if we can uh, make it there. Just to be on the safe side, took the fire extinguisher out of the trailer and put it in the cab of the truck uh, so we can monitor this side as we're going along. If I have a problem, I can get out real quick and hit it. But uh, not trying to be dramatic, just trying to be prepared. Prepared, thank you. So, problem number three we're, gonna, we're getting to court site. Come high water or bust. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just, it's life on the road, and, and we do these videos so that you all, it's, it's, yes, it's wonderful, it's fantastic, it's a life experience, educational, all those things, but it's not without its problems and unsuspect, un, unthought of problems. I'm sure there's going to be a part two to this video, but. Yeah, we got to tell you how it ended up. Off we go. Yeah. Okay, so wrapping up problem number three, um, I'm just going to go right to the last video why we were sitting at the rest stop. We saw all the smoke coming out of it. I felt the rim. It was incredibly hot, but uh, you could not touch it. I was so concerned that uh, about the heat that I didn't know whether the tire would blow or not. Now, our tire minder, we have these tire minders. It was never alerting us that there was a high temperature in this tire. And physically, I can understand that because physics is that inside this tire is air, of course, but it's dead air. It's not moving. And dead air is an amazing insulator. So 
it would take a lot of time for the air to heat up in here before this would go off. So I could give it that, that it couldn't tell me that there was something wrong with the bearing. It's, it's minding the tire, I get that. But if you are looking at these tire minder things and looking up at the temperatures it's telling you the inside air, you need to know that that's giving you a reading of the current air temperature in the tire and not, uh, it, it's not gonna help in an emergency like this to alert you that there's a problem with your bearing. It just isn't gonna do that. But the other big issue that I have with this tire minder is that we, okay, we left there, we had 17 miles to go, we limped it down the interstate, four-way flashers on 45 miles an hour or so, and we got there, and when I arrived, we could start to smell tire, rubber, and we pulled up in front of the place, and the tire was flat. Well, the tire minder never went off and told us that. And I always, frankly, put a lot of stock in this thing because every time I would take off one of these sensors to pump the tire up to make sure it was at 65 before we left the site, I, I sometimes would have the door open on the truck and I could hear it go off. I mean, instantly, before I could even set that thing on the ground. So why it failed this when it really needed to be working, I don't know. And it seems to lose signal a lot. Uh, even though it, it was one of the highest rated units, it came with a special uh, transmitter to boost the signal up to the truck. And it still is, I'm really on the fence with this thing. In some ways, it, it's kind of a pain in the tail because uh, every time it beeps, you're you know, startled that something's wrong with your tires and you stop and you look and actually there isn't. So. I don't know, but having said all that, we got there and um, the bearing had failed and all the time we've had this trailer, now this is a used travel trailer, I noticed that this axle, this wheel always seems to be kind of tipped back compared to this one, which seems to be tipped this way. And the wear pattern that we got on the tires reflected that. Because uh, we, we outfitted this with brand new uh, bearings and Goodyear Endurance tires before we left. So when they got that all apart, well, it turns out the spindle was bent. And how it got that way, I can't imagine. I mean, the amount of force that this axle would have had to take to get that. But uh, so now we're looking at getting an axle. And that'll be about $800 or so. Hopefully, when we get to court site, we can get number three problem all put to bed. But that's where we stand right now, and they assure us that we're good to go. Uh, but he said, you know, if you just keep running this way, it's just going to prematurely wear out your tire. You're going to go through $125 worth of tires every three, 400 miles or so. And well, that hasn't been our experience. The Goodyear Endurance has lasted a long time, but we have actually put several tires on this particular axle because of that problem. So we got to do something. Uh, I did see a video where every one or two years you should be going over your brakes and your, your bearings on your travel trailer. I would have never personally thought that. I mean, how often do you replace the brakes and bearings in your truck wheels? It, I would have thought we could get a little more mileage out of them than we seem to be. But it's certainly a red light that we got to tackle some of these kind of these problems we have off the court site and see if I can find a replacement axle, ideally used in great shape at a low price. <laughs> that would be nice. The really cool thing about New Mexico State Park campgrounds is they're really cheap. Only $14 per night for water and electric. Since we were out of the threat of freezing temperatures and snow, we ended up spending about six days in the Elephant Butte area.
I found these wild melons growing right on the side of the road. They totally fascinated me. I was never able to accurately identify what it was, but I do know that it's most Butte likely poisonous. In New Mexico. Major bummer. And uh, our truck here is sitting on a boat launch. Um, this is the Elephant Butte uh, Lake and State Park area. And uh, I've been told that five, six years ago, um, we certainly wouldn't be standing where we are now, that uh, there was this whole valley was a lake, and uh, you could launch from here and go north that way uh, for over 20 miles. But that's obviously not been the case for some time, so kind of sad but at the same time it, it gives a perspective into what the valley was like before it was flooded. Now we've been to this general area before in our very first year of travel, but at that time we spent most of our time in the Truth or Consequences area and never came up to see Elephant View, even though the two towns are right next to each other. So this time we explored the Elephant View area further, which included the Elephant Butte Lake. Even though the water level was very low, as we've been seeing all across the country, we still thought this was an extremely beautiful area. Besides exploring the towns of Truth or Consequences and Elephant Butte, you can also drive past the Elephant Butte Dam on Route 51 and then turn south on Route A13 to do more exploring. There's a historical marker for the El Camino Real. And you can also see the entrance to Spaceport America. Of course, we weren't able to just drive in the gate. They have tours leaving from the Truth or Consequences Visitor Center, and those tours take you through certain areas of the spaceport. And interestingly enough, Spaceport America is owned by the state of New Mexico. Do you know of you any other states that own days, their own spaceport? Here, enjoying just relaxing for a while and getting ready to leave. A little motorized lifter up or downer thing has given up the ghost. So, um, I took the head off of it. I've looked for instructions for this thing online many times. Can't find any. Anyway, quarter inch drive isn't taking much of this stuff, but I can get it down. I'll never get it up. I don't think this scratch would take it. So, we have to go find an RV dealer and get our motorized lift for the front replaced. Okay, so working on problem number four, we went down to an RV shop in Elephant Butte, a uh, supply store, very friendly man. And thank goodness he had this little crank here uh, it wasn't too bad priced. He says it's, uh, he's an RVer too. And he said the Bulldog brand is, is really good. Um, I'm going it this way because otherwise obviously the handle's going to hit. And it's fine except we have to have it in the, the handle in the up position to drop the tailgate. Otherwise it hits this. Um, so I de-energized, I went to de-energize the inline fuse for this guy and I realized the fuse was blown. But I don't regret the money that we just spent to get this because it was, if it was drawing enough amperage to blow a 30 amp fuse and we know it's just been sounding awful, there's something going on in this. Now maybe I can repair it, I don't know, it's like I said before, I've tried to find a, a diagram, instructions online for this, I cannot find them. 
but anything that can be put together can be taken apart. So I'm going to hang on to this, which weighs a ton, by the way, compared to this thing. And considering we're overweight, it might be nice just to get rid of that one, but <laughs> we'll see. I can't do it. I'm I know. I'm going to throw it in the truck, and when we get to court site, and I just have time on my hands, um, I'm going to take it apart and see see if I, I can get, I know I can get the head off, so if I can just get to this shaft and get it disassembled and get a good lube job on it, maybe we can reinstall it. And uh, for as little as this actually weighs, uh, I would, I'd keep it around as a spare. Um, anyway, by the time we got all this done, uh, well, when we got the purchase done, um, it was around one o'clock and we had to come back to the campsite because I lost this silly tin. We both knew it fell out on the ground and this is a split roller and you can bang on it with a screwdriver till the cows come home to flare it out so it won't fall out of here, which is how they had it staked originally, but it, it's it, it's a pain in the tail and I, I wish I had, I'm going to find more of these and just have spares and throw them in my toolbox. So that now that we came back and we're at the same campsite, it's one in the afternoon. So you know what, let's just rent the place for another day, <laughs> get this put together, throw this in the truck, and then maybe go play a little bit. And you just can't let this stuff get you down. But I have to confess, four problems in the past two weeks, this being number four, is uh, it, it's a little bit grinding on me, but I'll, it's fine. We're, we're getting through it, and I still feel blessed because we found somebody that had the parts got fixed and reasonable it, prices too. Yeah, it wasn't bad. This was eighty-five bucks. The shoe was eighteen dollars, which is a little hokey because there's no way to attach the shoe to the shaft, so you have to hold it up on there while you're cranking it down. So I can drill a hole through it and put it through the existing hole in the shaft eventually. So I'm just gonna pick up and. Then we can go play. Yippee! Yippee! So, in conclusion... <laughs> a lot of people probably think that we are cursed with bad luck, but we actually feel very fortunate and blessed that we had the money from the sugar beet harvest to do the repairs that we needed to do on our travels. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, everybody.